Hey there, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team. And in this video, I'm gonna cover how to use hooks in Generate Press. If you're not familiar with hooks, it's the idea that you can take an element or an entire section and hook it in anywhere across your site utilizing one simple interface. This means that we can apply something like this button in the navigation into our header automatically and conditionally show it. So if, for example, we only wanted this CTA to be visible on our homepage and our pricing page, then we can do that. We have really unlimited flexibility and that's why I wanna show you how this works. So let's quickly go to our WordPress admin interface. And if we go to appearance and then the elements section, we can see that there's a number of elements that already exist. When I first loaded this website, you could see that I was using the Simply Cloud template from the Generate Press site library. And that brings in a lot of other great elements for us from the start like this. One of which is already a hook type of element. So I'm going to go ahead and just edit this so you can see how it works. If I click on this CTA navigation, we can see that inside of it, there is just simply one button and that's it. And what we're telling Generate Press to do here is hook this in after our header. So if I click on the element tab here, we can see that the element type is hook. Now you're probably familiar with this dropdown from some of our other tutorials where we do things like create loop templates. We did that in the previous episodes when we covered the generate blocks query loop. But in this case, we have the element type of hook and there are tons of different hooks available to us here. You can see that the one that we're using right now to put this button after our menu is just the hook called after primary menu. We have a great guide to where all these hooks are located. I'll link that in the description of this video. Now, the reason why I said this is incredibly flexible is because we both have the hook as to where it should show up on the page, but we also have our generate press display rules here, which give us the ability to conditionally show and hide it depending on where we are on our site. Now, this particular button makes it so that this shows up on every page and you know everywhere across our site, but we could change that if we wanted to. So for example, if the location should be entire site, but we want to you know exclude maybe like a specific page, something like maybe just our pricing page, for example, we can update this. Then if we go to our pricing page, we can see that the button is now conditionally removed. This might not make sense for this particular example, but you get the idea. You have a lot of flexibility as to where those elements appear on your website because of that combination of hooks and display rules. So now that you understand how it works, let's go ahead and create one. And what I wanna do is go back then we can take a look at the patterns. Now these two patterns that exist in here, I created when we took a look at the Simply Cloud site library template. And what I wanna do in this case is take this CTA section and instead of adding it individually to every page or template across my site, I'm gonna convert this into a hook that will then mean I can apply it everywhere across my site or conditionally, just as we've shown, from one screen inside of Generate Press Elements as opposed to adding it individually all over the site. So what I'm going to do here in this case is I'm just actually going to edit this pattern. And instead of rebuilding this, I'm just simply going to click this container, control C on my keyboard. And now I'm going to go back. Then what I'll do here is go down to elements, add new. We're gonna choose the element type of block in this case. Then what we'll do is we'll call this CTA hook section. Then down here in the content area, I'll just control V and we have our layout here, which is perfect. All of that stuff is brought in. So then what I wanna do is again in our element, we could come down here to hook. And let's say in this case, we want this book a demo to be at the bottom of every page, but before the footer. So if we scroll down here, this is the testimonial section. And then here is our footer. Then I'll just type the word before underscore and footer in this case. So we can do like that. And the priority option here is just dictating if you have multiple elements that could appear in the same hook, which one is going to come first. Okay, so I have the hook set up here, but don't forget we still need to apply the display rule. So in this case, like I said, we want this location to appear on every page or every post across our site. So we'll pop that in here. Then what we can do is just go ahead and hit publish. Now, if we refresh this pricing page, we're gonna see that pop in right here. So if we refresh, there we go. There's our book a demo section. Then again, just for example's sake, if we go to our features, scroll all the way down, there is our book a demo CTA section that's been hooked in. Same thing, just to be clear, also happens on the home page. Again, we'll scroll down and there is our book a demo CTA section right before the footer. Now again, keep in mind, because of these display rules, we can conditionally show and hide this particular section wherever we want. Maybe for example, you only want this to appear on pages and that's it. Then this way it won't appear on your templates or your blog posts, for example. You have tons of flexibility here. 
The last type of hook that I want to show you is something that I use really commonly both on my own websites or for clients, and that's creating kind of a site-wide top bar to notify things that might be relevant for the business. Like let's say maybe they're closing for a couple days and you want to alert people no matter where they are on the site, or maybe you're running a special promo and you want to draw attention to it from all of your visitors. So I like to create an element and again, we'll go to block. Then what I like to do is call this top bar notification or something like that. And then what we could do here is just drop in a generate blocks container. Let's add in a little inner container here. We'll pop in a headline that just says, you know, something along the lines of like special promo pricing ends soon. And then something like, you know, click here to learn more. Maybe we would want this to be centered and then maybe, you know, you want a little bit of padding on this particular block. Let's go just with something like 0.5 rem on all sides. And then maybe on this outer container, we want something like a little bit of a background color here. We'll just do one of our kind of lighter blue backgrounds that we have as our generate press global color. So then of course we need to set our display rule here. So in this case, we'll do entire site. And a lot of times if I'm linking to a landing page, then I'm going to exclude that particular page from showing this top bar notification. So if I were to go to exclude, I could go to, you know, down here to page. And let's just say I had my landing page for this promo and that's somewhere in here. We'll just say maybe it's the features page, for example, but we can exclude this top bar from appearing on that page because of course it'd be a little bit redundant. Then what I would need to do is come over here to the element, make sure I have the element type of hook selected. And then the hook, I'll just go with something like before header. So now if I publish this and then let's go take a look at our page, we can see that our special promo pricing top bar notification is going to appear on our pricing page, our blog page. Of course, on our features page, this is going to go away. So I'll click into features now and we can see that because, you know, let's suppose this is the destination for that particular landing page link. Then like I mentioned, we don't need that there in both cases. So you can see how incredibly powerful these hooks are. There's tons of different use cases and it gives you so much flexibility. The combination of hooks and display rules is extremely powerful and something that once you start using, you'll really begin to appreciate the power of. If you have specific questions about how hooks work or you'd like to learn more, definitely let us know in the comments below and we'll be sure to address those in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.